Bienvenido, Sushamd, and welcome to another supplemental video tutorial and solution set on Cisco Networking Academy's Introduction to Python course, Lab 3.1. .1.12. And in this lab, we're going to be taking a look at the essentials of the if else statement. And specifically, we can actually do some things here with a nested if as well as the if else. And so there's any number of ways that you can solve this. I'm going to show you one way to do it and see if you can come up with maybe a more consolidated fashion to do this. We're also going to take a look at the if statement when there is only one action to be executed where we can pull that action off of the line by itself and indented four spaces and put it right after the colon of the if condition, what we're testing for. So let's take a look and see what lab 3.1.1.12 has to offer here. We've got this blueprint right here, which I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab right now. We're gonna come over here to the integrated development learning environment, and we've got our interactive interpreter, but we also have a file that we've created. I'm gonna go ahead right now and uh, not save it. We're gonna add some code into it first. And so I'm gonna work from this window here, and I have the description up uh, to the left of me here, and let me pull it up so that you guys can actually see this. So it says 10 to 15 minutes, easy to medium level of difficulty, and again, there's a number of ways that you could solve this. So using the if-else instruction to branch the control path and building a complete program that solves simple real life problems. And I did get a chuckle out of this when I saw real life problems and they bring up taxes, right? The land of milk and honey uh, where taxes are going to be due. And so here's what we're dealing with, right? And so here is our sort of control flow structure. So the first thing that we're checking for is we're checking to see if the citizen's income was not higher than 85,528. And they're, they call failures. They use this term failures for some reason. And I'm not sure why, because then they turn around and use cents. So instead of just simply saying dollars, but again, we're in the land of milk and honey. So we're going to suspend reality for a second here. So I'll drop the code in here in this window, and then we'll cut and paste it out of here. So the first thing we're checking for, and you can see here that income is the variable name that's been created. And this is the variable name that we're going to be referring to in our first test. Now, remember, if the citizen's income was not higher than, you'll notice it doesn't say higher than or equal to. So we're talking about strictly more than. So I'm going to say if income, whoops, let's spell income right. So if income is less than, right? Remember, if it's not higher than, if it's less than or equal to 85, 528, we're going, and if this test is true, right? Let's take a look at what's next. It says the tax was equal to 18% of the income minus 555. Uh, 56 failures and two cents. This was the so-called tax relief. So if you made less than 85,528 failures, then, whoops, sorry, it actually indents for me there. So let me back up here. So there we go. So we're four spaces. So if your income is less than that, what we're going to do is we're going to set the tax to, again, what was the tax rate going to be? Now I'm going to type it all out here and then we're going to discuss some parentheses. So it was the income times 18%, so 0.18, and then we're going to subtract 556.02 failures, right? Again, failure is just a dollar. Now, when we look at that, we know that multiplication is going to get executed first, but when you look at this, is there readability here, right? We've got multiple operators, multiple operands, maybe it would do some good to do something like this, to add a little clarity. Now, without the parentheses around the income and the asterisk and the dot 18, PEMDAS still rules and multiplication comes before subtraction. Remember, subtraction is dead last. So we don't need the parentheses there. However, that to me adds a little bit more readability. Now, 
that's our first test. So we've taken care of this first if, but here's where it gets a little tricky. Now, if the income was higher than this amount, the tax was equal to 14,839 thalers and two cents plus 32% of the surplus over 800 or 85,528 thalers. So what we'd be thinking, right? And this is what we're going to be thinking right out of the box is that, let me come back up here. So I'll hit enter. We're going to be thinking that, okay, well then we're going to say else and our else is going to be that the tax would get, and this is the second if statement, right? The tax would get assigned the value of, and we're thinking here, give me one second, 14,839, I need to define that number again. And then I don't know why they just didn't say uh, 0.02 Thalers in two cents. I'll say 14,839.02. And what are we going to do? Plus 32%. Right, so 0.32 of the surplus over 85,528. Well, the income is going to be what gets entered in. So if we're only interested in this surplus figure that's over 85,528, we can simply say the income minus 85,000, 85,528 right there. Now, when we look at this, right, again, multiple operators, and I'm sorry, I forgot to multiply that there. I was just looking at that. Uh, so we've got multiple operators here, multiple operands. And so again, this is going to be a great spot where we could come in and say, okay, the first part of this is if the income was higher than this amount, then the tax was equal to 14839.02. And we've got that plus what plus 32 percent times uh i'm sorry uh plus 32 percent of the surplus over 32 i'm sorry over let's see make me get this right here we've got the income and and actually we don't even need the first set of parentheses i was thinking the first one sorry about that and so here's really what we need right so what's going to happen is the first thing is we're going to figure the surplus out that they keep mentioning. That's the very first thing that happens because this is inside parentheses, inside parentheses. So the surplus is simply the income minus the 85,528. Remember, we're saying anything over the 85,528. So we subtract the income that gets entered in. Uh, we subtract 85,528 from what the user enters in. Then we multiply that times 0.32. And then that brings us to the addition, which we do right here. And so we've got that all in the else statement. Now, the mistake that learners typically make is they think that this is it. But let's read down here a little further. And there's a reason they're going to give you some sample input that's going to cause some problems. It says here it should accept one floating point value, the income. Next, it should print out the calculated tax rounded, rounded to full thalers. Now, that is done for us here. This code is already provided, right? Now, this is where a lot of students will get caught up, is they see this, the happy country never returns money to its citizens. If, and so again here, if the calculated tax is less than zero, it only means no tax at all. In other words, zero tax. You're not going to be getting any of your money back. <laughs> Might sound a little bit like the United States government. So take this into consideration during your calculations. So let's go ahead. Let's run what we've got here. In fact, this will be an opportune time to copy the code from here over into our integrated development learning environment, right? So everything looks good here. Let's hit F5 and we're going to have to, I think we have to save this, do we? We do. So let's say 3.1.1.12.py. Now enter your annual income. The first amount they want us to enter in is 10,000. Now the reason they're having us enter 10,000 in is because this is going to ensure uh, that we end up with this, or I shouldn't say ensure, but this should result in the 1244. So let's come back over here and say 1, 2, 3, so 10,000. And there we go. 
1,244 thalers. So it works great. Let's hit F5. And the next amount it wanted me to enter in, right, which is not less than 85,528. Remember, now we're entering in a number larger than 85,528 when we say 100,000. And you'll notice we get 19,470 thalers. Let's check this with what we're supposed to get. 1244, that checks out. 19,470, let's double check. Yep. So everything looks good. So the first two work great. But now we come down to 1,000. And I want you to take a look at the equation that we have here. So you're checking to see if the income is less than 85,000. Well, if I enter 1,000 in, it is definitely going to be less than. In fact, that variable income with a value of 1,000 multiplied by 0.18, we would simply go 1, 2, 3. That's going to give me 180, right? Minus 556, we're going to be somewhere out in the negative 370-something range, right? And I had two negative signs there. So we're going to end up with a number that's negative 370. And here's where we run into trouble because remember, the melt land of milk and honey is not giving you money back on your taxes, right? You're not getting anything back. So this negative 370, this is what should result ultimately in a printout of 0, 0.0. And you can see negative 100 is going to be even worse because that's negative right out of the gate. Uh, so we're probably going to end up with negative 1.8 minus 556, whatever that would be, negative 5 something. And again, we should see 0, 0.0. But let's see what we see with 1,000 and negative 100 because now is when we're going to run into some issues with the program. And let's go ahead and take a look here. We'll pop back over here and let's run it again. So we'll hit F5. And now I'm going to put in, uh, I'm sorry, was it 1,000? 1,000. Let's put in 1,000. And there it is. We get negative 376 thalers. And the reason we get that is because we have no code in here checking to see if, again, there's that if, checking to see if what's going to be returned is less than zero, right? Because remember, all the way up to zero, we're good. It's going to return zero. But once we get below zero, we've got a problem with this input here. Now let's run it one more time. F5. Let's enter in negative 100, which it's asking for. And there it is, negative 574 thalers. Now this is a problem because it should be printing out 0.0. .0 because in the land of milk and honey, there are no refunds. So... How can we handle this? Well, there's multiple ways that we could handle this. I'm going to show you one way to do this, and it's I like the nested if, right? And let me show you what I'm talking about. So what we do right here is we check to see, is the income, and this is our test right there. We're testing if the income is less than or equal to 85,528, then we're going to assign the, the result of that equation to the variable tax. Now, if that is true, right, we would do this assignment, but we could also come down here and say, if income, and we're going to say 0.18, and basically what we're going to do is, I'm sorry, 0.18, we're going to check this again, negative 556.02, less than zero, we're going to check it again. And if, if that's true, okay, we'll go ahead and assign tax the result of that equation, right? Now, this equation could be less than zero. So I'm checking again to see here, right? If this is true, Tax is going to get assigned whatever that value is. And when we were using 1,000 and negative 100, we were going to assign right here tax negative 376 or negative 574. So then I sneak a nested if statement in here that just checks and says, okay, well, if the income, and again, that equation is identical to the equation right up here, right? And it's checking to see. So if it's true that this income is less than that, 
go ahead and assign the value of the tax equation to tax. And in addition to that, I'm checking to see if this is also true, that it is less than zero. Because if it's true that it's less than 85,528 and it's true that it's less than zero, then we're going to assign tax to zero, or we're going to assign zero to the tax. And that's it. That was all that was required was this additional nested if to assign tax zero. So let's run this through again. Let's make sure we didn't break anything. I'm going to click yes. We're going to say the annual income at first was 10,000. And that's still correct. Let's run it again. Let's type in 100,000. And that's still correct. Let's run it again. And here's the true test. If, uh, what did we say, 1,000? a thousand. Now we should not see negative 376 because it should get caught right here on our nested if checking to see is the result of that equation less than zero. The exact same equation we used here and assign the result of to the variable tax. So let's hit enter and there it is. Tax is zero and it rounded to zero thalers, right? And so let's enter in, let's run it one more time and enter in the negative uh, 100. And again, if it worked with the 1,000, we knew that that would be negative 376. But now we work it with negative 100. We know it's going to be negative 574, but we've caught it now with the nested if. All right, so that is going to wrap up lab 3.1.1.12. And again, I sort of like the way that this played out. There are other ways that you could do this. And go ahead and experiment with it and have some fun. But that is going to wrap up our tutorial and solution set on lab 3.1.1.12. Thank you so much for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Have a good afternoon.